All right, so when do you want to roll? We have a... What's that? You're live. Oh, we're live. Hello, America! <laughs> yeah, know, and right? the world! And we're going to reach every one of them with this video, too. I'm telling you. Don't underestimate. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and action. Um, so tell us a bit about ePolitics. Right. Um, ePolitics is a resource for anybody who does digital advocacy, actually anyone who does political advocacy out in the world. And really like any online communicator could put it, put it to use in some way. But we look at the tools and tactics of online politics. I'm the founder and editor and I've been in the digital I've been in the political world for almost for 20 years and I've been in the digital political world since the early days of the dot-com boom. And uh, the last 10, 12 years, I spent most of my time working with nonprofits. But um, I also, um, uh, we have a lot of contributing authors and uh, we cover a lot on the electoral side as well. So what tools are you most excited about in this um, electoral season? Uh, honestly, data. I think that the kind of the story, a little bits of it is starting to leak out. Um, you can see, you know, sort of, um, uh, NPR has done a couple stories on like um, micro-targeting ads, that sort of thing people are beginning to figure out. The kind of things that commercial advertisers have been doing for a while, where like, you know, you'll go to a website and then you'll see an ad for that same website wherever you go. Like Zappos Shoes is really good at that, you know. Um, see the political campaigns doing that, but much more so the behind the scenes data. Um, the data they gain on their own supporters by the actions that those people take. You know, for instance, if somebody gives you ten dollars, you'll probably target them with an email asking for twenty the next day, or you know, the next time you ask. The next day, you yeah. Just struggle the idea. Hey, listen, yeah, that might be a bit much, but some people will do it. Yeah, um, I'm on Newt Gingrich's email list. Oh God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, the uh, yeah. Every day he asks you for money. It's like, listen, I'm not Sheldon. <laughs> I'm not Sheldon Adelson. I'm not going to give you any money. Close, Nobody absolutely. else will. But the uh, so yeah, so that's the kind of thing where. You know, and they'll take that data that they have on their own members and they cross-reference it with um, consumer databases. So, you, you know, the kind of magazines people subscribe to tell you about their interests. Um, other people are putting together applications where you can leverage your own supporters' social data. For instance, the company NGP Van has a product that um, plugs the voter file, which is the, uh, the database that campaigns use of voters in the district they're running in, right? So uh, when you're running for office, you hook up with a vendor that hooks you up with the voter file so that you can then target people in your district, traditionally with direct mail. But now, uh, like with NGP Vans product, you can, which I forget what it's called, of course, but uh, they, um, uh, when, say, for instance, I support a candidate, I sign up on that candidate's website, I sign up for this particular program, um, it shows me, it looks at, I've signed up through Facebook Connect, right? So it looks at my Facebook connections, then it compares that to the voter file, and it identifies people the campaign may want to reach based on their demographics, for instance. Maybe the campaign's focusing on women over 50 in the district, or past Democratic or Republican, in NGP Vans case, Democratic voters. Um, so that uh, you match the voters you're trying to reach to the friends of people who signed up to support you, and then you get the friends to contact them on your behalf. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's yeah. And so, like people, the to me the real story is rarely being told. Um, there's a bias in favor of Facebook and Twitter because they're visible, right? It's very easy to see what somebody tweets. It's very easy to see what somebody posts on their Facebook page. It is very difficult to see someone's database-driven um, uh, email campaign that's sending out 40 different message variants to people across the country depending on the actions they've taken or the interests that the campaign has figured out that they have. You don't see that. ProPublica, I believe it was ProPublica, um, was able to reverse engineer one because they started with a husband and wife who were sitting on the couch with their laptops. Each of them got an email from the Obama campaign at about the same time, each with a different fundraising amount ask and slightly different wording. And so the reporters solicited uh, people around the country to send in other versions of this email, and they put together this nice little interactive chart of the demographics of the people who got which message. Um, and that's normally very, very, very hard to reverse engineer. Um, so 
but that's where the real work is being done. You know, that's where people are being primed to donate. That's where people are being primed to volunteer. Um, but you can see a YouTube video, so that's what gets reported on. So it's interesting though, so uh, I know probably a lot of campaign managers mm -hmm. get it. They get this um, silo that these consultants, these old school consultants, mm -hmm. just aren't familiar with the media. So these campaign managers, and they want to reach out to social media, where do they even go to find <laughs> the experts to get this done? Well, they should, uh, step one, they should read epolitics.com. E <laughs> well, and there are guides, there are guides out there. Uh, it is not easy. You know, I have an online politics 101. I'm actually finishing up a um, guidebook for candidates for 2012. But, you know, if you tried to learn this stuff from scratch, it would be difficult to do it in one cycle. Uh, one advantage, I think, now this is, a very, this is a very serious point, I think. The Democrats have a big advantage in the trained staff, partly from the vast number of people that the Obama campaign trained in 08, partly from, I think, the nonprofit world, right? People in nonprofit space are disproportionately liberal. And um, when you have 10, 20, 30,000 nonprofits in DC alone, each of them doing online advocacy, you're training a big cadre. And then we also have specific groups like the New Organizing Institute, which trains hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of field organizers, online organizers every year. Uh, groups like the Progressive Change Campaign Committee that are specifically raising money to put new media directors on uh, congressional campaigns that they want to support. So they're going to funders and saying, give us money to place a new media staffer at this campaign. On the Republican side, you just, what I, I hear grumbles from my Republican friends in the uh, online world that the talent pool is shallow and that the people who are ending up on like even senatorial campaigns don't necessarily know what they're talking about. But you know, the funny thing is for Republicans in general, do they really have much of a hope? I mean, really with, like, <laughs> with social media, because I mean, you know, nature of the beast, who is the base? It's uh -huh. not exactly the largest social media crowd. So are they inherently um, at um, a disability? I, I don't think so anymore. Half the country is on Facebook. And it's not, it's not the half the country that's liberal. Like, um, I, you know, my, uh, I'm from East Texas. Uh, shout out to Palestine, Texas. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, you know, I have a lot of friends on Facebook from high school who are conservative. And, you know, they're just as active as my liberal friends are. Um, Twitter, Republicans took to in a big way in 2010. I think in some ways they actually got a little bit Twitter myopic. You know, they, they were having success on Twitter, so they weren't looking around at other tools as much as they could have. Um, it's almost like they got a little overconfident, which Democrats could easily have done after 2008. Interestingly enough, let's go back to like platforms and yeah. um, what type of like good content have mm -hmm. you seen for like campaigns? Like what type of content can they do? Can they do a Coney? Can they get that uh, kind of engagement right. through uh -huh. a video? What you can, I mean, Obama, what did they put out? Something like 1,800 separate YouTube clips uh, in 2008. I think they had well over a billion minutes of YouTube view, view, viewing time in 2008. Um, sometimes it was a slick produced things, behind the scenes, looks at the candidates, that kind of thing. Um, some of their most effective video work was uh, campaign manager um, David Plouffe, talking into his iPad, or his iPhone rather, iPads weren't around yet, talking into his um, uh, Mac, at basically giving a strategy update to field organizers and volunteers, f making them feel like they were brought into the circle. The kind of thing that campaigns, kind of information campaigns have traditionally, again, held close to their chest. They don't want to talk about their strategy. He put out videos where he was openly telling the, the supporters where, how what they were doing fit into the campaign's larger work. And that was extremely effective. People pointed to that all the time as something that kept, helped to keep people motivated. Well, Colin, I really appreciate oh, it. Oh, thank Thanks, you very man. much. I really enjoyed it.